I'm Sarah, a tutor at Accountancy Learning, and in this video, I'm going to be taking you through the Financial Accounts Level 3 AAT Sample Paper 1, Task 3. So Task 3 is about producing, adjusting, checking and extending the trial balance. And in the first part of this task, we're asked to complete a few statements about classifications of accounts. So let's have a look at the first one. So rent received is, and then we're given a list of possible answers. So rent received, that means the business has received payment for rent or has invoiced for rent. So that would be an item of income or revenue. A loss on the disposal of a non-current asset. So if we make a loss on something, that means the business is going to be liable for that cost. So therefore, it's going to be an expense to the business. For the next one, then, we start to have a look at errors that may be disclosed by the trial balance. And again, we need to complete some statements for each error identified below. So the first one. An invoice which is completely omitted from the accounts, then we've got to choose will or will not be disclosed by the initial trial balance. So if an invo invoice has been left out completely, then that means there's going to be no effect on the debits or credits. So therefore, it wouldn't affect the trial balance. So in this, these questions, you're going to be looking at whether the error that has been given to you is going to cause an imbalance between your credits and your debits, because the trial balance should always have an equal debit and credit figure. So any error that puts the debits higher or lower than the credits, then it will be disclosed by the trial balance by pulling that trial balance together. Any error whereby um, the double entry isn't affected then that wouldn't be disclosed by the trial balance. So the next one then, the entries made with regards to an invoice for £100 for parcel deliveries are completely reversed. So if a transaction has been completely reversed, it means the debits and credits have been put in, but they've been put in the wrong way round. So therefore, this wouldn't be picked up by the trial balance because your debits and credits are still going to equal, but they're just on the, they're just the wrong way round. The next one that we're given is a bank payment is made for cleaning supplies. The correct figure is entered into the bank, but no other entries are made. So will this error be disclosed by the trial balance? So because the correct figure is entered into the bank and no other entries are made, all that's happened is our credit bank. We haven't got our debit. So this is a one sided transaction. So when you pull out the initial trial balance, there's going to be a difference between your credit and debit. So therefore, this particular error will be disclosed by the TB. And then the last statement then we need to answer is the figures on a purchase invoice for inventory are illegible and the wrong figure is entered into the ledger accounts. So again here, although the wrong figure might have been entered in, the actual transaction has been done with a debit and a credit. So it might be the wrong figure. It might say £100 instead of £1,000, for example, but the actual debit and credit is the same. So therefore, it wouldn't be disclosed by the trial balance. Moving on then to the next part of this task, which is to do with your bank reconciliations. So let's read through the information that we're given. Haroon has received his bank statement and asked us to complete the bank reconciliation. The balance on the bank statement shows as £30.76 debit, which means it's an overdrawn bank balance. The cash book 
is currently showing a debit balance of 34.24. And then we're given a list of four items that are either outstanding on the bank statement or the cash book. So we're told that bank charges of £50 appear on the bank statement. And we're also told a bank transfer for £150 has been received from Jack Limited and it appears on the bank statement, but not yet in the cash book. And then the third one is a cheque for £250 which Harun has paid into the bank, has been recorded into the cash book, but not yet been recorded into the bank statement. And the final one then, a cheque paid out for £85, is not yet recorded in the bank statement. I've intentionally there gone and highlighted in different colours because of how we're now going to reconcile our bank statement. So we can go ahead and start putting in some figures here. So we need to start with the balance per the bank statement. So this was this little bit up here that we were given. And we need to make sure how do we need to enter this into our answers? We know here we have to use minus signs to show any overdrafts as a negative figure, but all other figures should be positive and we should answer to two decimal places. So make sure you do take note of this in the exam before you rush in and try and answer. So because we've got our overdrawn balance, it's going to be minus 30.76. And now we have to now look at what is going to affect our bank statement. So when we go through them, these top two here in yellow, that's actually what shows on the bank statement. So that's already within this £30.76 overdrawn figure. So we don't need to do anything with them as part of this bank reconciliation. What we will do, though, is we will use those to prove our bank reconciliation at the end. So the ones that we're going to be looking at are going to be these two in pink. So a cheque for 250 from TS Martin has been received from Jack Limited. And it's been paid into the bank. But it has not yet been recorded into the bank statement. So we have that in our cash book because we've received it. So we now need to add it to our bank reconciliation because it will be paid into the bank. So we're now trying to prove our bank statement is the same as our cash book, even though we've got timing differences. So we're going to add our £250, remembering our two decimal places. And then the next one in pink there is that a cheque's been paid out for £85 to Rosie's Flowers. So this has been recorded in our cash book because we've sent the cheque out, but it's not yet actually been banked by that supplier. So it's not yet in the bank statement. So we then need to take that off. So we're going to put Rosie's Flowers in here. And we're going to put £85 with our two decimal places in there. Now, remember, in the exam, you will be able to use these drop down arrows in order to choose which description you want. So then we just need to do our minus 30.76, add 250, minus 85. And we come to a balance of 134.24. Now, at this point, don't get confused with this figure here. That isn't the figure that we're trying to reconcile against. So we now want to prove that our cash book, after these timing differences, would still come out at 134.24. 
So now let's have a look back at these ones in yellow up here. So first of all, we know that our original cash book balance was 34.24. Now let's have a look. On the bank statement, there are bank charges. So that means the bank has charged a fee for whatever their service is, and we haven't yet put that into the cash book because it's only appeared on the bank statement. So we would then need to less our bank charge So we would take off the £50 bank charge. But we're also told about this bank transfer for £150 from Jack Limited that's gone in. Maybe they haven't sent us a remittance. We don't know about it. But when we look at the bank statement, we can see it there. So now we need to update our cash book. So we then would add our Jack Limited receipt of £150. And when you then take your original balance minus the 50 plus the 150, you then come out at a new balance of 134.24, and these two match. So when you're approaching this question, be careful not to just jump in with the cash book balance that you're given in the question. It's highly likely you will need to make the adjustments based on the information you're given to get a new cash book balance, and then those two should balance together. So let's move on to the next question. So in this next question, then we are going to be talking about the trial balance and some error corrections that need to happen. So we're told that the trial balance has been produced for the year ending the 31st of March 20XO. So the debit column is 71652 and the credit column is 71602. So straight away we can see that there's a difference. We're then asked to prepare the entries to correct the following errors using the blank journal below. So again, in the exam, you will be able to use the drop down to select from the given options for your journal, and then you need to type in the figures. So first of all, let's take each one in turn. The closing balance of inventory has been omitted from the accounts. It's valued at 2,870. So when we're looking at our closing balance then, our closing balance for inventory is going to be an asset on our statement of financial position. But it's also going to be a credit on our statement of profit or loss because it is included within our cost of sales formula. So when we're doing our profit or loss, we need to take into account our cost of sales. But when we're doing our statement of financial position, we need to record that inventory as an asset. So our first one is going to be our closing inventory. And we're going to put it on the statement of financial position. Now, as it's an asset, that's going to be our debit figure. So we'll have 2,870 on our debit side. And then our equal and opposite entry will be closing inventory of the statement of profit or loss. And that's going to be the credit entry. So we've now completed that one. So then we've got Harun has decided to use some of his savings to expand the business. So he's then paid a personal check into the business account for 2,500. This has been posted to correct the accounts, but the incorrect side of each account. So we've paid a check in here for 2,500, 
but it's been it's been posted to the correct account. So we know we've used the correct accounts, but the incorrect side. And what that means is what should have been a debit has been posted as a credit. So when we're looking at this, what has actually happened is if we look at our T accounts, we are going to have our bank account because we've paid it into the bank. But we're also going to have our capital account because he's putting money into the business. So what should have happened is we should have debited the bank, but it's been put on the incorrect side. So what's happened is we've put the bank as a credit and the capital as a debit. So that's actually what has happened in the question. So what we now need to do is we now need to work out how can we correct that? So be careful with this one. Don't just jump in and put your figures as two and a half thousand, because if we go and do it correctly with two and a half thousand on the correct sides, then these actually net off to zero. So what you then need to do is do it twice because then you would have your balances on the right side. So when you're dealing with things being posted to the incorrect side, you need to first of all take out the incorrect one and then put in the correct one. So our actual figure is going to be double. So we will then have our bank account, which is going to be our debit here. So that's going to have 5,000. And our capital account will be our credit from here of 5,000 as well. That's that one done. The next one is a payment of £50 rent without VAT has been correctly entered into the bank account but omitted from the relevant expense account. So this is a one-sided transaction and when we deal with a one-sided transaction we need to use the suspense account. So the payment has been put through into the bank correctly, but it's omitted from the relevant expense account. So as it's rent, our expense account then will be rent. So we now need to increase our rent by that £50. So that's going to be our debit. And because it's a one-sided transaction, we're going to use the suspense account as our opposite and equal entry. You can't put it back through the bank because then you'll be double counting it. So you need to put it through the suspense account. That's that one there done. And then the final one then is the total, so the gross column of the purchases returns day book has been overcast by £100. So what does that mean? So the total column, our gross column, is what we post to our payables ledger control account. And because it's a purchase return, that would reduce how much we are owed owe to our suppliers. So it would be a debit into the payables ledger control account to reduce our liability. So this debit has been overcast by £100, which means £100 more has been entered into the payables ledger control account. So because we would have debited that extra 100, we will need to credit it. And again, because it's only the total column that's been overcast, we've now got a one sided transaction. So the other parts of the day book have been posted correctly. But only the total column has been overcast. So therefore, our actual posting doesn't equal in the first place. So we've got an imbalance. So we now need to use the suspense account again. So our debit is going to be our suspense account for the 100 overcast. And our payables ledger control account is going to be the credit to reduce that overcast. So be careful with this question because being purchased returns, 
will throw you sometimes in an exam. We naturally kind of assume it's just payables, it's just the purchase ledger. Unfortunately, in this question, being purchases returns, it's very easy to start thinking about it in terms of the increase and decrease in the liability, assuming that it's actually the fact that you've purchased something rather than returned something. So do be careful with the question. Now we've finished our journals here, but just to prove that we're actually right, the differences up here that we were given in the first place would be 71,652 minus 71,602, which means there is a £50 more on the debit side. So the debit side is higher. Now, when you have a look at the two suspense transactions here, if we were to draw out our suspense account down here, you can see we would have a posting of 50 on the credit side, and we would have a posting of 100 on the debit side. So when you would then balance that off, you can then see that that is your 50 pound difference. So therefore, you know that you've done the question correctly. The next bit then is we need to finish extending the trial balance and in calculate the profit or loss and specify in the appropriate space in the first column whether it is a profit or loss. So we need to go through and put in all of our figures here that we're given. So the first one that we need to answer is the opening inventory. So the opening inventory is the stock at the start of the period. So i.e. what was the stock at the end of the last financial period being brought forward into this financial period? And it would then be a debit on the statement of profit or loss. The opening inventory doesn't touch the statement of financial position because it's the closing inventory, actually what you have at the end of the period that is your asset. So the opening inventory needs to go as part of your profit or loss because it's part of the cost of sales formula. So you're going to put that on the debit side of the opening inventory on the statement of profit or loss. The next one that we are asked to do is going to be the closing inventory. So as we were just talking about, our closing inventory is going to show on both the statement of profit or loss and the financial position. And the way, the best way to remember this is thinking about that asset. The closing inventory is your asset at the end of the period. So that has to be the debit on the statement of financial position. And then it has to be the credit on the statement of profit or loss as part of the cost of sales formula. The next part then is the loss on disposal of a non-current asset. So as we determined before, the loss is going to be an expense to the business. So that's going to show on the statement of profit or loss as an expense. So that's going to be your debit on the profit or loss. And then now we need to have a look at where we are. So in the exam, your totals will actually auto sum. And what you will come to is you will have the figures here. And there will be a difference in your figures. When you're looking at that, you then need to have a look. Well, is my statement of profit or loss? Is my debits or my credits higher? So if your income is higher than your expenses, so if your credits are higher than your debits, then it means you've got a profit for the year. And if 
it, your debits are higher than your credits, it means you would have a loss for the year. So in this case, the credits is the higher figure. So I've put these two figures in here um, to show which one would be the highest figure as it auto calculates. Then what you would do is you would use the figure that's in this box here to determine what the difference is. And because our credits are higher, we would then put our debit figure here to make it balance. And then you would have balance in here. And because it's a debit on the statement of profit or loss, it will be a credit on the statement of financial position. And again, you will then balance off here. And don't forget to fill in over here for your profit or loss. And because your income is higher than your expenses, it will be a profit for the year.